Hey Sens fans, welcome to today's video where we're going to be discussing the recent news that have been, has been released by the Ottawa Senators regarding the firing of Belleville Senators head coach Troy Mann. Now, initially when this news broke on Thursday night, the firing seemed to be a regular relieving of duties, aside from the fact that it was under extremely peculiar circumstances, uh, considering the Belleville Senators were, had just won a game and were four points out of a playoff spot. But uh, we'll put that aside for now, um, because since then, there was a report that was put out by TSN's Claire Hanna via a source that claimed that Troy Mann had actually provided some of Ottawa's pre-scouting materials to another NHL club. So a few hours after Claire reported that out, a Boston reporter and podcaster, Murphy's Law, chimed in, saying that he had spoken to an NHL source about that th this whole situation. And that that source had stated it was hard to believe uh, this whole situation as an AHL coach wouldn't have access to an NHL coach's pre-scouting report. So this brought a whole other side of, of the conversation to, uh, to the situation. And of course, it's created a lot of speculation across social media, and there seem to be more questions than answers. And all of this is complicated by the fact that Troy Mann's brother, Trent Mann, is an assistant general manager with the Ottawa Senators. So my oh my, there's a lot to talk about. And Matt, uh, I'm wondering, have you been able to make sense of this at all? Not not a whole lot. I remember when the news broke, I was kind of shocked. Uh, I didn't even know they played last night, and I definitely didn't know they won. So that was definitely uh, confusing. And a lot of people, it, it you know, rightfully so, were kind of ticked off. Uh, you know, Troy Mann seemed like a really good internal option if they were going to move on from DGA Smith. But it also brought the question of how many AHL head coaches get relieved of their duties randomly during the season. Um, and there's been three since 2019. Uh, that raised a lot of a lot more questions than answers and then obviously this morning Claire Hanna uh getting the scoop uh regarding why he was let go and I think everybody was you know okay uh with him being let go if that was the case and it leaves a lot to you know man should probably put out a statement at some point or another if he it, you know if it if it happened then he probably won't uh it's just it's a really weird situation uh and then you have you know somebody else who has a source who's refuting that and so it, we can only speculate and and think about it as much as with the information that's already out there uh, it's unfortunate because I think, as I said, he would have been a great option if uh, if we had moved on from DJ. But the way it's happened is so weird. Uh, you know, some of the wording in the press release, and uh, and and then in and Ryan Bonus's um, press conference saying like cohesion between the affiliate in the NHL club, like that that is weird like it doesn't make yeah. a whole lot of sense and then in the updated statement that he he made you know today on friday uh it was he kind of reiterated that but he said you know communication lines weren't great and it's just very interesting now i know ryan bonus's assistant gm roles include him being the gm of belleville um now, as much flack as Sean Simpson gets, and sometimes rightfully so, uh, more often than not, but um, he was saying this morning on TSN 1200, you know, he was an assistant GM and his duties uh, were to be responsible for the AHL team. Um, I believe it was the Marlies at the time, and he was uh, a GM for them for like seven years. And he said often that the assistant GM who's in charge of the AHL team, they won't make a move like this without discussions with the rest of the, the front office. Absolutely. And anything that he did would have to be run by the GM. And so Pierre Dorian would have obviously been involved in this. It wasn't single-handedly Ryan Bonus's decision, I'm assuming. And on top of that, it's just 
very confusing because Trent Mann would have also been in the front office. And yeah. I feel like if Trent Mann had come out in the last day or two, uh, I mean, maybe he still will. I'm not sure. But if he had come out and, and resigned over this, then I think maybe he would show he's taking a stand with his brother and yeah. takes his brother's side of, of the story. But I think it's just curious that he hasn't done anything yet. Troy Mann hasn't said anything yet. Um, some people think the leaks are coming from the organization to Claire, and that's why this seems so one-sided against Troy Mann. It's all speculation, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know also I've, I've seen some people saying like, well, yeah, like how would he have access to – DJ Smith's, you know, pre-scouting notes on whatever NHL clubs. And that's a fair question. And, you know, that like that Murphy's Law source guy had said, you know, that you wouldn't expect an AHL coach to have access to that information. My hunch, I mean, I know there's a lot of speculation out there. Um, uh, the only plausible, you know, theory I've come up with is that, if the Ottawa centers were hosting their scouting notes on like a digital cloud service and he had access to it, then maybe he took notes and forward them to another team. Or if they sent something out in an email, like, I don't know how the organization does things. Uh, they don't have an analytics department. So I don't think that they're some tech whizzes, you know? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah. who knows? Um, it is very peculiar. And I think, if you took this weird little, I don't know even what you, you'd call it, but uh, I guess un, unnatural situation that's come out of this, Troy Mann is a good coach for yep. developing young prospects and helping talent graduate to the NHL. And in Hershey, he managed to do that. And some of the guys he helped develop went on to win a Stanley Cup with the Washington Capitals. So I think there's no denying that he's a good coach, but if the rumor or the report that Claire Hanna put out is true, then there's no surprise why the Sens fired him. I think that yeah. that shows that you don't have loyalty to the organization who's invested in you for the past however many years. Um, you know, And odds are he will not work in hockey yeah, again. Yeah, if, like, if at least true, in North American hockey. It, it, yeah. it won't happen. No, if this is true, like I could not see an NHL team taking him on, at least not at this point in time. Yeah. Um, it, it would have to be something where I think that they would have to get a lot more information about the situation, probably talk to the senator's organization about it. But anyway, all this to say it is just a whack situation is what I've called it. It is very weird. And of course, it's the Ottawa Senators. More drama yep. from the Ottawa yep. Senators. <laughs> I saw a crazy theory that was... Uh, you know, Troy Mann was gunning for DJ Smith's job and he got his hands on the pre-scouting notes, sent it to teams. Uh, <laughs> it was about the senators. He sent all of that info to the teams they were going to play so they would beat the Sens and DJ would lose his job. And I was, I was re this was on Reddit, of course. <laughs> and of course. I, I thought, you know, what you know it's perfect it makes sense it's it's exceptional but doesn't make sense whatsoever maybe troy I, man uh oh, sorry i was gonna say uh maybe troy man you know found out that dj smith had an only fan subscription to gritty <laughs> oh god i i mean after that yeah and then photo sparta dropped. cat was just really upset about it like yeah that did you just did you see the all-star photo where yeah gritty, yeah, you know, yeah yeah yeah, oh, scarred, I, I, scarred for life. <laughs> oh my gosh! I, I mean, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat, I guess. And uh, <laughs> ultimately, it's it, it's a bummer because you know you don't want to see good coaches uh, fired for for stuff like this. And Belleville has had a terrible stroke of luck with with injuries, and uh, considering how close they are to a playoff spot. Um, I think that has a lot to do with the coaching and I, who knows if we'll ever actually get like the correct story. So. Yeah, no jokes aside, it is just a crap situation. I think yeah. Troy man was definitely the guy you want to, to be your development coach down there. Um, now bringing him in as like an interim 
NHL coach in the event that DJ Smith was let go. I think some people were for it. Some people were like, no, we don't need any more coaches who have no NHL experience. Um, I personally think that if he wasn't going to be an NHL coach, like from graduate from his role and be promoted into an NHL head coaching job, he would have been a solid assistant coach. He seems to be one of those guys who just is really smart and uh, about the game and, and understands players strengths, weaknesses, and how to really help them out with their confidence and stuff like that. And that's super necessary in today's game, especially when you see a lot of, of players, or at least more recently, uh, more players take time off. Um, like, for example, Jonathan Duran going into the players' assistance program, taking time away from the club uh, for mental health reasons. Carey Price did the same thing. It's I think it that aspect of players is something that is really important nowadays as well, especially with how social media is. It's just so easy for it to become a toxic space for players. I mean, we saw that with the whole Zaitsev situation earlier in the season. So Troy Mann was good for that. And um, it's too bad that th this is how things have gone down. Uh, like you said, we need to wait till more comes out about this to really get a grasp on, on the magnitude or the completeness of the situation and really understand what happened. But early on, it's just, it's just so weird. Yeah. It's just a very weird situation. Like, I don't even know what to say other than that. I think that's all you can say. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I guess we'll leave it at that. Uh, thank you for watching our video. Uh, if you haven't seen already, we just released a video with uh, Jamie McLennan and noodles. So go check out that. That was a great interview. Um, Jamie's a, a swell guy, and and we couldn't stop smiling. Uh, it was a good interview. Um, we're up for the 2023 Faces Magazine uh, Best Sports Podcast Award. So if you like listening to our content or watching our content, please, uh, we'll put the link in the description. You can go there and vote for us. You can vote once daily, and you can find us on Twitter at Centennial and Instagram and Reddit at The Centennial. And uh, yeah. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll have more content for you in the near future. Go, sends, go. Vote for us and go, sends, go.